We are continuing our way too early 53-man roster projection with the defensive side of the ball this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo fan base podcast network. My name is Justin, and I will be your host today, and right off the top, I just want you to give me some grace this week. I asked for that. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with another cold here. Um, and I don't know, man. It's crazy. I've been getting sick more times than I can remember, um, but did want to get to this episode um, just before we kind of explore you know, where where I think the team can be improved. Um, particularly, I wanted to get this in before we hit the June 1st, um, I guess, deadline here where we're getting the, the Trey White money freed up. Um, so going to dive right into it. Again, I want to say that the, this is with the disclaimer that this is a way too early roster projection. Um, things are going to change throughout the off season, not only with like tinkering with the roster, uh, but as we see kind of like OTAs, training camps, all that. Um, for example, you know, last week I had a, a pretty hard line stance on Chase Claypool wouldn't have been the move for me. Um, now I'm kind of maintaining that sentiment. Um, but then, you know, we get into OTAs and we see him making plays and He's saying all the right things and, you know, trying to make a believer out of me. Um, so we're going to explore this again further into the off season. Um, this is just kind of, you know, as I see it now. And um, I'll, I'll tell you this much based on the messaging coming out of, you know, the Bills organization. I have Claypool on last week's episode as somebody that I think would be cut. Um, and I do, I do these projections more to be, to try to be predictive of what I think will happen. Um, and I'll tell you this much. If I go back to the offensive side of the ball right now, I, I'd have to find a way to get Claypool in there because I, I do think he's going to end up making it. Um, so things that we'll revisit as we go forward. Um, we're going to start off with the defensive line. Um, a lot of players here, and you know the Bills love to rotate a lot of players. I do think that with the June 1st money freed up, that this is a possibility of where the Bills could still add. Um, my thought is mostly at the defensive end position. Um, obviously... You know, Greg Rousseau, Von Miller, AJ Epinesa. You've added Javon Solomon in the draft and Dwayne Smoot already in free agency. Um, I think that you would love for Javon Solomon to kind of show you some things during the offseason and preseason and whatnot. Um, that would make him, you know, that last defensive end on your roster. Um, but there are still some names floating out there that. You know, if they think Solomon needs a little bit more time, um, I could see this being a position where they add um, defensive tackle, I think, could be a spot they look at, too. Um, so currently on the roster, we have Greg Rousseau, Daquan Jones, Ed Oliver, Von Miller, AJ Epinesa, Dwayne Smoot, Deshaun Williams, Austin Johnson, Casey Tuhill, Dwayne Carter. Eli Anku, Javon Solomon, Cameron Klein, Branson Dean, Kingsley Jonathan, uh, Rondell Bothroyd, and Ooh. I'm not going to get this last name right ever, so we'll just go David Uguegbu. Um I have him not making the team, so hopefully he doesn't, doesn't blow our socks off, and that's a name we got to figure out how to do on a regular basis. Um, I have the Bills cutting also Deshaun Williams, Branson Dean, Cameron Klein, Eli Anku, 
Casey Tuhill, Kingsley Jonathan, and Rondell Bothroyd. Um, I'd say kind of the bigger surprises here might be Casey Tuhill as um, somebody that we just signed this past offseason. Um, I think that was a player that was kind of brought in as like insurance depth if we weren't able to find an edge that we liked in the draft. I think bringing in Solomon could kind of put him on the outs. Um, Eli Anku, somebody that's obviously been on and off this roster, uh, on the practice squad. I could see him ending up there again. Um, but I think he's had all the chances in the world to kind of make enough of an impact to to stick to a roster. Um, and, you know, we're, we're adding Dwayne Carter in the draft. Um, so I, I could see Eli Anku, you know, ending up on the practice squad again. Obviously, somebody that we've seen get claimed off the practice squad end up back here. Um, so as of right now, I just don't have him making the 53-man roster. Um, and then Kingsley Jonathan. Um, one was kind of a hard cut for me. Um, you love the story. You love that he's, you know, went to school right up the road. Um, but I, I think he's kind of similar to Anku in that he's he's had a lot of chances presented to him uh, to kind of latch onto this roster and just hasn't really been able to, to stick. And, you know, you're looking at some guys in previous years, and I'm just going to use Shaq Lawson as kind of tail end of the roster guy um, as, as a guy that he wasn't able to beat out and we all know how much I love Shaq Lawson personally for what he brings to the table. It's not exactly the most difficult uh, skill set to to replace. Um, the other cut here that I have that I could see kind of going the other way um, be Deshaun Williams. Um, I think kind of between him, Austin Johnson, how many defensive tackles they end up keeping, I think that'll be kind of the interesting uh, competition there. Um, linebacker, Matt Milano, Terrell Bernard, um, Edifuan, Ulafoshio, Dorian Williams, Nicholas Moreau, Deion Jones, and Bale Inspector. And I almost have this linebacker room as kind of staying just as it is. I only have one cut from the group, and that is Deion Jones. And that's just kind of uh looking at kind of the youth movement on this roster i think bale inspector has flashed at times if he could only stay healthy um and then just kind of keeping the number up there just based on the new kickoff rules based on how many linebackers this team historically keeps um in just the thin number that we already have i think this is a spot where we're going to see a few more additions as we move through the summer, um, even if it's just camp bodies. Um, but for right now, I think that group's going to pretty much stay as is. Uh, cornerback room, Christian Benford, Razul Douglas, Taron Johnson, Kyer Elam, Jamarcus Ingram, Cam Lewis, um, Kyron Brown, uh, Kenny Lovely, Daquan Hardy, and Corey Couch. Um, here I don't think I have really much for surprises. I have them keeping Benford, Douglas, Johnson, Elam, Ingram, Cam Lewis, and Daquan Hardy. Um, cutting Kyron Brown, Lovely, and Corey Couch. Um, kind of the wild card to me here is Daquan Hardy. Seems to me like they have possibly some sort of plan of having him involved in the return game um i think we're gonna see a lot of kind of the tail end of the roster players be a little bit different of decisions than we're used to seeing and that's just with the new kickoff rules everybody's gonna kind of be adjusting and trying to figure out the, the best plan for um how to attack this um so 
Daquan Hardy was brought in with, you know, return game experience, um, kind of the the tail end of the roster there. Your, you know, front end of this cornerback room is pretty set. Now, this is also a place that I think is pretty interesting when we talk about the money that's going to be freed up from from the Trey White cut. Um, I think the group as it stands is a pretty solid group. I think we're, it's also an area where we've seen um, Benford have injuries. We've seen Taron Johnson miss some time. Razul Douglas is getting a little bit older. Kyrie Elam is still kind of a question mark. Um, and then you're getting into Jamar Singram, who I'm a big fan of, um, but, you know, one snap away from being cornerback four, how comfortable are you with that? Um, so I could see this being, again, kind of a sneaky position um, of where that money may end up being uh, allocated. Um, I don't think you're going to go out and take it a, a huge swing and get, you know, some big name. But I think in addition to this group is something that could be possible. Uh, moving on to the safeties. This is one that I think is kind of interesting right now. Uh, currently on the roster, Taylor Rapp, Cole Bishop, DeMar Hamlin, Mike Edwards, and Kendall Williamson. Um, this is where I don't love reading too much into OTAs. Um, Mike Edwards is kind of dealing with an injury. Um, but it sounds like DeMar Hamlin's been making some plays there. And as of right now, I have DeMar Hamlin as a player getting cut along with Kendall Williamson. Um, I think the DeMar Hamlin situation is just very complicated. So if we if we look back, you know, a couple of years ago before the cardiac arrest incident, um, there was a stretch of games where DeMar Hamlin was starting, I believe it was like 12 games, um, and kind of holding his own. My biggest complaint on him was he was making like full speed mistakes, um, whether it was missing tackles, overrunning plays. Um, he, he was doing everything super fast and, and missing for whatever reason. Um, but he was kind of developing. Now we see the addition of Cole Bishop. We see the addition of Mike Edwards, Taylor Rapp being re-signed. It seemed to me like it was going to be uh, a, a pretty easy cut for DeMar Hamlin. And then we see, you know, through the OTAs, um, he had at least an interception and there was a pass breakup. Um, so making some noise, I don't read too much into the OTAs. You know, it's it's real simple things. Um, no pads. We'll see what happens there. As of right now, I have DeMar Hamlin getting cut, um, as well as Kendall Williamson. Um, for the specialists here, Sam Martin, Matt Hawk, Jack Browning, Tyler Bass, and Reed Ferguson. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have Jack Browning and Matt Hawk um, both being cut. Um I think Matt Hawk is at least interesting to look at um, when we see kind of some of the struggles that Bass had um, down the stretch last season and, you know, how great Matt Hawk was as a holder, but he wasn't a great punter. Um, Sam Martin was obviously, you know, extended and then kind of had some of his own struggles um, towards the tail end of last season. I still think Sam Martin is the guy for now. Um, maybe Matt Hawk was brought in to kind of help work with them to to refine that whole, you know, snap to hold the kick process. Um, this is something that one year ago I was pretty psyched about. We weren't going to be talking about hunter position or the holder position or the field goal uh, unit as a whole because Tyler Bass was looking great. We weren't talking about holding and Sam Martin was doing great as a punter for how little he had to do it. Um, 
Unfortunately, I think that's something that's kind of going to be a conversation again. Um, and, and we'll see where it shakes out. Um, so that's it. That's the 53. Um, if you put the numbers from last episode together with this one, I promise it gets to the 53. Um, like I said, a, a ton's going to change between now and the beginning of the season. We're still going to see the tinkering. I think the biggest factor here is going to be that Trey White, June 1st money and and what happens um, with that money. We know that we still have to sign the rookie class. Um, that should factor into be about $2 million, um, which leaves us with the money that we have now plus the Trey White money. It's going to leave us with about the $10 million to play with. Um, so does Bean kind of keep that money in his pocket for... Um, in season moves, you know, kind of let this roster play out a little bit. Um, see if there's any injuries. You know, we we've seen this roster get just absolutely devastated with injuries. Um, last year, going into the playoffs, it was the linebacker position, cornerback position. Um, we've seen it be the safety position. Uh, I could see a world where, you know, Bean has experienced that and. You know, he's loaded up on trade capital next year. Maybe he just wants to keep that in his pocket and be able to make a bigger swing, you know, once the season gets rolling as he sees, you know, oh, this part of the roster isn't working out the way that we thought it would. Or, oh, we're really, we're already on CB3 and it's week four. You know, things that you never want to see happen, but always happen in football. Um, So I think... Personally, I've gotten myself really excited to see what they do with this June 1st money. Um, you know, you start looking at the really fun ideas of like, does Bean take a big swing and try to make a trade for, you know, a Debo, Debo Samuel or T. Higgins or Brandon Ayu? Um, do we see something like that? And I think it's much more likely that we see kind of a status quo and maybe some smaller moves um, for anybody out there that's really excited for a big swing at the receiver position. I'm just going to, I'm going to approach that with, you know, a pumping the brakes mentality. I think if you're looking through the free agent route, I think the bills are pretty set with who they have at receiver. And I, from all the languaging coming out, it sounds like, you know, they're pretty comfortable with uh, uh, spinning the ball around, giving everybody a turn with it. Um, so I think your kind of top, like, five receivers are pretty much locks, and you already have a decent competition for, like, wide receiver six. I think unless you're adding kind of like a bona fide number one receiver... I just don't see it as likely that they're going to use these assets that they free up to add somebody in to, you know, convolute this wide receiver four, five, six type battle. Um, if anything, like I said, I could see a move at across the defensive line, maybe cornerback, maybe some more linebacker depth being added. Um, but we'll see. Um, we're only a couple days out from that that money being freed up. I'm recording this on the 29th, so we're pretty close to, to seeing what happens there. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be talking about that next week, whether something happens, whether it doesn't happen, um, and kind of go from there. Um, moving forward from this episode, I kind of want to get into a bit of a position review series um, and kind of look at where I think we stand at each position group, um, not just for this season, but kind of going forward, um, ages of players that have been here, where we could free up some money down the road, um, where I think, you know, some rookies might be able to make an impact and take over some spots. Um, so that's going to affect any, you know, roster projection going forward, any moves that I think we'll have going forward. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I do thank you for joining me on today's episode. I want to keep this one a little bit shorter. Like I said, I'm, I'm 
I'm struggling today, um, dealing with the sickness, but I, I thank you for tuning in um, for this projection. Again, drop a comment. Let me know what you think about some of these cuts. If there's things that you would do differently, if you think the, you know, the brass is just going to see it differently. Um, love to hear your feedback on it. Um, I do ask if you've made it this far in the episode, um, please like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about the show if you're enjoying it. Um, and if this show's not for you, check out the rest of the shows on the Fanbase Podcast Network. There's tons of shows, kind of something out there for everybody. Um, and make sure you're checking out our our website, wanderingbuff.com. Um, Jake's doing great work. We have some new articles up there, um, some clothing um, from Wear Buff. Um, so check that out. Some pretty sweet designs. We're going to be rolling out some new stuff all throughout the season. Um, so make, make sure you're checking out wanderingbuff.com. Thank you again for joining me on this week's episode, and we will see you next week. As always, go Bills. Thank you.